Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about two topics that have made quite an impact in recent biology. Those are genomics and proteomics. So what do these words mean? Well, genomics refers to the studying of it, whole genomes, entire genomes. That is complete sets of DNA in a cell. So this tells us about all of the DNA, all of the genetic information stored in a species. And this can be very, very complex. For example, in humans, there are 3.2 million base pairs that make up our genetic information. Proteomics is similar. It is also studying a large amount of content, but rather than studying sets of DNA, proteomics studies sets of protein sequences. So this refers to those amino acid sequences that make up the proteins and of course the proteins in our cells are what are the functional aspects of the cells. Proteins are involved in practically every cellular process. For example, in humans, there are between 20 and 25,000 proteins. And at this point, approximately a quarter of these proteins are still unstudied. That is, they've been found within the cell, but nobody really knows yet what they do. Now, genomics and proteomics, what makes these things possible? Mainly two things. Perhaps most importantly is DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing is up and coming technology. It's getting better and faster all the time at piecing together not just all of the base pairs in a given genome, but the order in which those base pairs are put, the order in which they exist. Now, once you know the order of the nucleotides, you can then determine for the protein coding sequences, that is for the nucleotide sequences that actually code for protein, you can determine the amino acid sequence that is coded for by those nucleotide sequences. And of course, that is made possible by the fact that all organisms share a universal genetic code. If you are interested in learning more about the universal genetic code, how it works, how it helps us to go from a known base pair sequence or nucleotide sequence to a known amino acid sequence, then see my video on the universal genetic code. But now let's move on to something else. Why are genomics and proteomics important? Why do we care about studying whole genomes and studying large sets of protein? Well, a few different reasons. In terms of human medicine, it allows for faster identification of new drug targets. We mentioned earlier the approximately 25,000 proteins that human cells are capable of making. Many of these proteins are essential in various cellular processes. And when something goes wrong with those processes, disease results. And so by understanding the proteins that are present in our cells and which proteins may need to be upregulated or downregulated, which proteins may need to be prevented from doing certain activities in order to prevent disease, this means that we have, with the process of genomics and proteomics, faster identification of new drug targets, that is, proteins that we can target with drugs to cure human diseases. 
In addition to better understanding of cell processes, genomics and proteomics also give us a better understanding of human genetics. Perhaps the best example of this is that before the human genome was sequenced, scientists believed that the majority of the genome coded for proteins. And in fact, we now know that that's completely incorrect. Less than 2% of all of our DNA codes for proteins. The other 98.5% codes for non-protein sequences, things like introns, regulatory sequences, centromeres, telomeres, uh, transposable elements. And these are things that scientists are now really getting to dig into. What do they mean for human genetics? What do they mean for cell processes? How do they affect physiology and disease? This adds a whole new layer of complexity to the human genome that is only really just beginning to be explored. Another reason that genomics and proteomics are important is because they give us a better understanding of evolution. By comparing whole genomes, comparing genomes of different species to each other, we can see how closely related those species are. This allows scientists to build phylogenetic trees and to determine how certain species are related to each other, how closely related they are, what their similarities and differences are, and this tells us a great deal about the evolutionary processes that resulted in the world as we know it today. So that is the end of our discussion of genomics and proteomics today here on Biology Professor. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot.